Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. And so now I'm going to dive once again into some circuit analysis with a CAS code amplifier. Now, that is a really odd name, CAS code. This is a shortened form of what was called a cascaded anode amplifier. This was originally devised in the 1930s using two triode vacuum tubes. The object was to mitigate the effects of the Miller effect on the frequency response of the amplifier by hiding the output of the common cathode amplifier behind a common grid amplifier. Now, more on this Miller effect in a little while. This same configuration has been ported over into the semiconductor world using various types of transistors. In this video, I will be specifically addressing its implementation using bipolar junction transistors. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Now, Let's learn a little bit more about this Miller effect. Well, the Miller effect constitutes the why behind the CAS code configuration. And so that is why we want to spend just a moment trying to at least appreciate its influence on the lowly common emitter amplifier circuit. And this begins by remembering that a capacitor is formed any time we have two pieces of some conductive material of a given area separated by an insulator of any sort. This is true of any conductive materials and any insulator. Thus, two people standing next to each other form a capacitor of sorts. Now, let's dig down into the bipolar junction transistor. If we look at the base collector junction, we have the base material, which is a conductor. We also have the collector material, which is also a conductor. Then we have the space charge region between them, which acts as an insulator. This forms a capacitor, effectively capacitively coupling the base input circuit to the collector output circuit. This capacitance is known as C mu. As you might surmise, a similar thing can be said of the base emitter junction. This capacitance is known as C pi. The thickness of the space charge region associated with the base collector junction is noticeably greater than that of the base emitter junction. This is because the base collector junction is reverse biased and the base emitter junction is forward biased. The greater the distance between the conductors, the lower the capacitance. Now, this means that the capacitance associated with the base emitter junction is going to be greater than that of the base collector junction. But this does not mean that we can simply ignore the base collector junction capacitance because of the Miller effect. So now we ask, what is the Miller effect? In essence, the Miller effect describes how the effects of this base collector capacitance are essentially amplified by the gain of the amplifier. So, how does this happen? Well, think about this for a moment as we look at the common emitter amplifier. One end of this base collector capacitance is connected to the base where relatively small changes in voltage occur. The other end of this capacitance is connected to the collector where much larger changes occur and in the opposite direction. The current associated with the charging and discharging of this capacitance are proportional to the voltage across the capacitor. The voltage change in the collector end of the capacitance is determined by the gain of the amplifier stage. So, a voltage change, let's say, by 0.01 volts on the base could cause a voltage change of minus 1 volt on the collector if the voltage gain were 100. This causes significant changes in current associated with the capacitance, which is proportional to the gain. 
The effective or Miller capacitance may be found by multiplying the actual base collector capacitance, C mu, by 1 plus the gain of the amplifier. In essence, this injects frequency-dependent negative feedback into the base from the collector. The higher the frequency, the greater the negative feedback and the lower the gain. So, in marches the CAS code amplifier to help us mitigate this issue and extend the frequency response of our common emitter amplifier. Well, the CAS code amplifier consists of a common emitter amplifier followed by a common base amplifier. Q1 is the common base amplifier and Q2 is the common emitter amplifier. As you can see here, I am using a voltage divider string to properly bias the two transistors into their linear active region. The bypass capacitor on the base of the common base amplifier ensures that the base of that stage is at an AC ground. Thinking back to the video on the beta stabilized common emitter amplifier, the resistive string as seen on the bases and the bypass resistor in the emitter circuit of Q2 comprise the beta stabilized circuit as seen in that video. R1 of our beta stabilized circuit is made up of RB1 and RB2. R2 is RB3. So, how does this work? Remembering that the Miller effect is the base collector capacitance C mu times 1 plus the voltage gain of the amplifier, we want to keep the voltage gain, AV, as low as possible with the common emitter amplifier. We also have to bring to mind that the gain of the common emitter amplifier is proportional to the value of its collector resistor. The collector resistor for our common emitter amplifier is the input impedance of the common base amplifier. One of the characteristics of a common base amplifier is that its input impedance is very low, often on the order of single digit ohms. Thus, while we enjoy the benefits of the high input impedance of the common emitter amplifier, the gain of this amplifier stage is very close to one. With a voltage gain of one, then the multiplying effect of the common collector junction capacitance is minimized to a factor of two. The common base configuration does not suffer from the Miller effect. So, where does the gain come from? It comes from the common base amplifier. So here is the gain equation for a common base amplifier with the source resistance approaching zero. This source resistance is the output impedance of the common emitter amplifier. So how do we know that this equation applies? Well, we revisit the formula for the output impedance of the common emitter amplifier as seen here. Here we can see that the output impedance is highly dependent on the value of its collector resistor. And as I said before, this is essentially zero because it is the very low input impedance of the common base amplifier. Thus, it is safe to use the simplified equation for the common base amplifier as the gain for the entire CAS code amplifier. And as you will see in the next video, this actually ends up being a pretty close approximation. Now that we know why it exists and how it works, how do we go about actually designing one? Well, now that we know the reason behind this configuration and the basics about how it works, you are ready for the next video, which will walk through actually designing one. I will also show the results of this both in the simulation environment and with a bench experiment. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.